Good morning, Fort Hill. It's Friday, August 7th, a beautiful day. I'm standing here outside in front of my hummingbird feeder. I thought that might be more exciting than um, drinking a glass of wine because I'm going to read the wedding at Cana story today. And we know about that where water was turned into wine, which is exciting. But I wanted to stand here because I've got a couple of hummingbirds kind of fighting over the hummingbird feeder. And maybe they're actually doing a mating dance is what I'm thinking. Since this is a story about a wedding, I thought that might be fun. Listen now from the Gospel of John, chapter 2, the first 12 verses. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. And when the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And then he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the water <laughs> that had become wine, and did not know where it had come from, though the stewards, the servants who had drawn it knew. The steward called, oops, the wind, the steward called the bridegroom over and said, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. And Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there a few days. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What a beautiful story. It's always nice to see that. And I don't know if any of you have seen that little um, meme that's going around on the internet where it shows a picture of the wine section in the grocery store. And over it is a sign that says water. Or maybe it's the water section and over it is a sign that says wine, that Jesus has been there. You know. Anyway, it's kind of cute. This is an incredible story because it's the first of Jesus' miracles. And what happens in this is we hear um, we, he's at a wedding. We don't know whose wedding it is. We think it might be somebody who's related to Jesus, a brother, a sister. Who knows? His mother's there and must have some say in what's going on. So she's like, oh, we're out of wine. Do something. And, but Jesus is saying, what concern is that to you? My hour has not yet come. And all throughout the Gospel of John, We'll see the first 11 chapters are considered the book of signs. And this is the first sign that points to Jesus as the Messiah. And then the following chapters after that, after chapter 11, are known as the book of glory. His hour has not yet come. And Jesus talks about that over and over again in the Gospel of John. We hear those words. There's also something else in this passage that's interesting in that he calls his mother. It says, woman. And I looked that up and realized that it's kind of considered a little bit discourteous for him to say that to his mother. But throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus says, woman, five times. At the end, it's twice, close together. And... Um, Every time Jesus says woman and some declaration with a question or declaration, he is about to reveal something about himself. So pay attention whenever you read that in the Gospel of John. So what is it Jesus is revealing to us when he does that? Well, we can interpret that to say that Jesus is the bridegroom and the church is the bride of Jesus. The people of God are the bride of Jesus. So 
here we see that Jesus will save for us the best. You, you, you know, it kind of fits with that. The first shall be last, the last shall be first, but it's also the best will still be with Jesus, regardless of um, whenever we're brought to the wedding feast. This is a feast too, so it reminds us of that final feast in heaven with our God. And so we rejoice when we hear this story. We rejoice when we realize Jesus is with family and friends and celebrates and reveals his power and his glory. Um, so thanks be to God for this good word. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you and we ask you to bless those who are being married during this pandemic. It is hard for families to gather together as Jesus did with his family and friends for this wedding at Cana. But we know your power and your miraculous ways are still at work in this world. You bind us together as your bride to Jesus Christ, our bridegroom, that the deep love of Jesus for his church continues on and that he will save the best for last and bring about his glory. We thank you, O God, for these words of scripture, for the promise of love eternal. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you and God bless the ones that you love.